morning, good afternoon, good night, good tomorrow, wherever you are in the world. Uh, it's communion time. It's communion time here at LOR Radio. It's communion time this morning. It's the first Thursday in the month. It's the first day of December, by the way. So happy December to everyone. And um, uh, I wanna, let me just shout out my, my honey and my daughter. Like, I, I never see you're on, but of course you were on last week. So <laughs> just so, and for all those who I don't see, I really don't see anyone when I'm broadcasting. So and that's why I'm not calling anyone out, but thank you all for tuning in. Blessings to all my nieces, all my loved ones, all my friends all my uh, Facebook family, uh, YouTube family, and LOR Radio family. How's, you know, how's Sister Imogene doing? Great. I am so happy to hear that. Really, I am. It's been a while. I, like, I, I haven't heard or spoken to her in a while. But anyway, uh, God be praised. God be praised. Um, I want to uh, say... Happy belated birthday. I acknowledged you guys, but a couple of my pastors celebrated their birthday last month. Pastor Thornton, who tirelessly works for his church members and our community. I want to thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, I want to thank uh, Pastor Paul Blake, had it celebrated his birthday on the 30th, his 60th birthday, by the way. Um, and so I want to say uh, happy belated birthday to you as well. And, you know, Pastor Blake is getting ready to do something for the youth within the Caribbean. And, you know, and uh, we should join him. So there, there you go. Um, and uh, listen, we have some pastors, some ministers, some lay ministers that are boots on the ground doing what we have to do for the Lord. Because listen, it takes boots on the ground. You know, Jesus went out in the highways and the byways. Like he just didn't sit up in the synagogue. He did go to the synagogue. He did worship. Yeah. Yeah. So we do that as well. So let's uh, go out and fellowship with each other and at church and then let's put our our sneakers or our boots on and roll up our sleeves and get out there and do what we need to do for our communities i also want to thank pastor martin dr martin from christian fellowship sda so um paul blake is paul blake ministries pastor thornton is sailor missionary baptist church one of the oldest churches in brooklyn and um Dr. Martin is now the pastor of Christian Fellowship SDA and Schenectady, and he is a community advocate. He's out there working not just for a community. He is working for all communities, for the betterment of all our people, for health benefits. You know, like I said, boots on the ground. And hey, Pastor Monroe, keep doing what you're doing. He's now working with the mayor, and um, we look forward to all the great things that you're doing, Pastor Straker and all you guys. So we thank you. I want to thank you, Pastor Bishop Anderson, for the messages that you're putting out there. I just pray for each and every one of us that we have that, we keep in the presence of the Lord, keep eating, living, and being the Word of God, because we're living in some times i'm telling you mm -hmm. we need to be the light we need the light of jesus to shine through us so we don't need anything to gunk up the light as i like to say we don't like anything to block the light of jesus so let us stay before the throne of god before the throne of god hallelujah glory to god so now that i've said all of that i thank everyone we give praise, glory, and honor to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, most of all. So thank you, Lord, for this message today in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Listen, it's communion morning. Are you excited? Ah! I am. I am excited. Amen. Like, seriously. 
<laughs> like I can't even hide it. Like you, you can't you can't fake um, just being excited for Jesus. Come on, you just can't. This morning's message is entitled "Communion: Power of the Cross." Let me tell you something, sons and daughters of God. I got this title, believe it or not, playing one of my puzzle games. <laughs> you believe this, Bishop? I've been playing this game for years. When I say years, I mean years. And, you know, every time I change phones, unfortunately, I have to start over because it just doesn't transfer. So no matter what level I've gotten to, it, it, it puts me back with each new phone. Um, maybe it's one of the things why when my phone's limping, I'm like, yeah, I'm not changing it. <laughs> but anyway, to God be the glory. But you know what, Bishop? I was, I was playing this game, sons and daughters of God. Listen, I was playing this game, Bishop. And it dawned on me the power of the cross let me tell you something when the light colors line up in the formation of a cross guess what happens the space becomes a bomb i was like get out because <laughs> let me tell you something when you when you after you get that space right now you can literally demolish the other things that are in your way all the blockages that are in your way like that's the way to demolish them in the power of the cross come on am i the only one excited you don't know i was sitting there going for real no god i was like listen i knew there was a reason i liked this game <laughs> besides the challenges right to see that god can demonstrate even in a game, the power of the cross. Come on. Come on with me this morning. Hallelujah. The power of the cross. You know, like I said, I don't know. I'm just excited. <laughs> well, I've been excited. Yeah, I've been excited for a while. Bishop, Bishop, let me tell you something. I was just dumping up and down. I'm telling you. Y'all know me. Y'all, those who know me, you can see me doing it, right? All right, all right, all right. Yes, do I good. As, as sorrowful, a bitter heart, eat its owner. A sad heart, and the, and the Bible says, the Word of God says, that when our hearts are sad, it's a slow death. You're like, you're just killing yourself. So, yeah. Better to be happy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, this one I want to ask you. How aware are you of the power of the cross? Are you aware of its power? Right? What are some of the... Listen, let me just jump into it. I'm not even going to... I'm going to read Numbers 24, 1 through 9. And I, I, I want to show you a picture. But I, let me read this. So that's Numbers 24, 1 through 9. I am reading the New Living Translation. Right? So, everybody... Okay, so let me not make an assumption that everybody knows the story of Balaam and Balak. So Balak, the king of Moab, he wanted to curse the children of Israel because he really hated them and he hated the king of Israel. He was like, listen, you know there's some people who don't like when you're happy? Seriously. There are people who don't like to see anybody happy. They don't like to see you happy, but that is the spirit of the enemy that is upon them. They're being manipulated by the enemy of their souls. Because God wants us to be happy. I don't know about you, but listen. The Bible said in the book of Zephaniah, God rejoices over us. He loves when we're happy. What parent loves when your child is sad? If you're out there, 
please contact me. Let's pray. I need to pray for you. Or maybe contact somebody who you want to pray for you. But if you don't want to see your child happy, I, I know, um, hey, uh, Tabitha, you know, I've prayed for you, always pray for you. Tabitha just said she has a young baby and her baby was in the hospital with the RSV, um, with the virus. Listen, no parent loves to see their child unhappy, sick, or discontented. How much more our Heavenly Father? Who knows how to give us the best gifts? Come on. Come on. So, yeah. So let me read the Word of God because we know we're blessed reading, blessed hearing the Word of God being read, and even more blessed when we live the Word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, by now, Balaam realized the Lord was determined to bless Israel. So, Balaam, so Balak had called Balaam to curse Israel, but God said, you can't do anything that I didn't tell you to do. Uh, we're in a beautiful space this morning. Come on. Now, Balaam was doing his di divination as, 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 as Balak kept taking him to different points to see the Israelites. Finally, Balaam woke up. Like, like you know. And, and it isn't like us. Because a lot of us, as children of God, the Lord talks to us. He tells us things. And we don't, we don't listen. It's like we don't he even hear him. And then finally, when the, when the ding, 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 ding goes off. And as Jessica likes to say, clap and boom. When the clap and boom hits, we shouldn't have to wear for our clap and boom. Come on, sons and daughters of God. The Bible said we ought to listen for the still small voice of the Lord. You know, the tiny little, mm, the whisper, the feathery, mm, right? We should be aware of even that voice. The voice that is so silent. That one. Yes. So anyway. So it took Balaam a while. So now, by now, Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel. So he did not resort to divination as before. Instead, he turned and looked out towards the wilderness where he saw the people of Israel camped tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And this is, what, this is the message he delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of one who hears the word of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty. Hallelujah, glory to God. Come on. Like he is saying, mm, did you see this? This is a message from a man whose eyes see clearly. The message of the one who hears God's word, right? Who sees a vision from the Almighty. Who bows down with eyes wide open. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob. How lovely are your homes, O Israel. They spread before me like palm groves. Like gardens by the riverside. They're like tall trees planted by the Lord. Like cedars beside the water. Oh, to be a tree planted by the rivers of water. We bring forth fruits in our seasons. Our leaves do not wither. And whatsoever we do, we prosper. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Water will flow from their buckets. Their offspring will have all they need. Hallelujah. Talking about having children and having everything that your children need. Glory to God provided for them. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. For them he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows like a lion. Israel crouches down like a, a lioness who dares to arouse her. Blessed be anyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed be everyone who curses you. Blessed is everyone who blesses you, and cursed is everyone who curses you. My God, my God. And as I'm saying this, I forgot, hey, Apostle, it was her birthday last month. And it was also my son's birthday last month. It was also Erin's birthday last month. So 
happy birthday to all of you. <laughs> it just came in my head. Holy Spirit was like, you forgot some folks. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we continue. Listen. So, Balaam, Balak wanted Balaam to curse Israel. I'm going to show you a picture of what Balaam saw. Listen. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm... Do you see, do you see this? Do you see this? That is Israel in the form of a cross. In the center, you see the Ark of the Covenant, where you see the cloud of smoke going up. And all around the Ark of the Covenant are the children of Israel gathered by their tribes. You have Gad, Simeon, Reuben. You have Judah, Issachar, Zebulon. Benjamin, Manasseh, Ephraim. Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. Do you see the power of the cross? Come on, sons and daughters of God. We take for granted the power of the cross. Listen, the children of Israel were in a formation of the cross around the Ark of the Covenant, right? And listen, they received salvation through the cross because listen, no one, they were, can I say something? They weren't aware that Balak was out there trying to get them cursed. Yet God protected them on every side. You see, there are children of God that are in the church. Smudging, going to the Obia man, the witch, the warlock, the, the, the soothsayer, the, the what, what do people call again? The tarot cards, readers, the, the, the psychics. Really? Only God is omniscient. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's the only omniscient God. Triune God. Huh? Who knows everything. Even the enemy of our souls doesn't know what God knows. Come on. People play guessing game with you. And you're like, yes, they know. And not to say... That there won't be people because we, we read it in the Bible where the, the little girl, the young girl, um, when when there was the spirit of, 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 what was it? The spirit of, what was that? That deceptive spirit was ruling over the city. Yes. And she kept saying, oh, I know you are men of God. And right? Even the demons said they recognized Jesus. So it's not to say they won't know things, but they don't know everything like God does. For we all know in part, Bible, hallelujah, glory to God. Here's what's happening. The children of Israel, they were camped facing the Ark of the Covenant of God. You know, uh, uh, Sister Evangelist Arlene, hey, how are you? Oh, how you doing? Hold on one second. <laughs> one second. Uh, please give me a, a minute, Bishop. I have to um, send uh, this message to her. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My God, my God. She, she, but she did a message, right, where... The, this pastor, a, a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, was preaching. And he talked about God, uh, Abraham. And how Abraham, or Abram, did not see his the deadness in his flesh or the deadness in his wife's womb. Why is that? Because he was focused on God. He looked to the life giver, didn't he? That's who Abraham looked to. He looked 
to the life giver. Yes, he did. He looked to the life giver. And so, because his eyes was focused on the life giver, life came back in his body. Life came into his wife's dead womb. The Bible said she had a barren womb. But the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, he did not look upon that. That was not where his focus was. And this is where a lot of the children of God are defeated because we tend to be looking upon, no, we, 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 no, we are overcomers. The Bible tells us we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. Jesus has already given us the victory. So we're looking at it all wrong. You see, the, when sickness tries to come upon us, we have to look at Jesus. I told you all last week, I got up and came and brought the message. Listen, it was only Jesus. I only looked at Jesus. If I had looked at how I felt or what was going on, I would not have brought the message last week. Because I told you, a bug came up on me. I took the test. You know, it wasn't COVID. But, and, and the thing is, they're not even, they're like, well, they're, do you realize there are things going around that we can't even figure out what they are? <laughs> but guess who knows, Daddy God? And he says, baby, you okay? You're going to bring the message. I said, okay, Daddy, you said I'm fine. I'm fine. See, who are we listening to? Who are we looking to? We have financial situation. We can't pay our bills or the bills are, or the job situation or this is going on. And we tend to look at, at, at our bosses depending on mankind. The Bible said the harms of flesh will fail. A few weeks back, I told you my husband... Um, his, his, him and his co-workers were called to a meeting and the boss said, I sold the company. And that was the first time they were hearing about it. Put um boom. <laughs> but I, as I always told my husband, God is your paymaster. God is my husband's paymaster. God is supposed to be our paymaster. God is my paymaster even though I don't work. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't understand. My daddy God takes care of me, okay? Yes, he does. We have to focus on Christ. The children of Israel, they encamped, their focus was the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of God. Their backs were turned to their enemies. Now who in their right mind in the desert camp out with your back to the enemy? Nobody. There's nobody. Trust when soldiers are going to war, that's not how that's not how they that's not how they're doing it. If you have members in your family who've been in the army, ask them. They'll tell you. They will tell you. Sorry. One second. Okay. It was out of focus. Yeah. So I'm just saying to you, listen to me. The children of Israel, they were not concerned about their enemies being in back of them. Some of us, we're so concerned about what everybody else is doing. We're concerned about the world. A lot of ministers are, are, are guilty of that. Well, what is that minister preaching about? Well, how many followers they have? But can I say something? If a, if a minister is influenced by people, then where are you leading the ones that God has given you responsibility for? Because if you're influenced by people and you're not sure if that person is influenced by, the, by God, then think about what you're doing because you have to give an answer you know the bible said even parents got to give an answer on that day let me tell you something it wasn't part of the message but it is now mm, jesus listen some of us have adult children and we're like oh 
day on their own. Well, when God calls you on that day, and you still have to give an answer, tell him that, why don't you? No. No, ma'am. No, sir. Mm -mm. You're still responsible. Read the Bible again for yourself. God doesn't even leave us alone. He's our heavenly above. And many of us are very old, right? Some of us not so much, but others are. And he never leaves. He's always guiding. When our kids become older, we're still supposed to give guidance. So stop saying. Some of us, I can't wait for them to be 18 to be out on their own. Did the Bible tell you that? Anyway, wasn't part of the message, but I don't know who it's for because the Lord just had me bring that. I don't know. Talk to Jesus. That's all I'm going to say. Well, well, like if, if, if the pin stuck you just now, just talk to Jesus. As as my, my sister's husband used to say, ouch. <laughs> Bishop, when we used to discuss the Bible, you know, when he was alive, um, Philip. When we would discuss the Bible, and sometimes when some points came up, when it, when it hurt, he said, ouch, but I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all we gotta do say ouch but daddy yeah thank you yeah all right so here it is the children of israel they were encamped that way can i say something you and i have salvation through the cross today because jesus bore our sins in his body on the cross of calvary you see the curse was broken off of us because the tree of life hung on the tree taking the curse off of us so listen who are we supposed to look to let me tell you something no demon from hell you see jesus our savior is our shepherd and guardian of our souls the bible tells us in, in the king james version he says he's the bishopric jesus is the shepherd the shepherd the one and only the guardian of our souls okay and so he protects us from any and every curse every witchcraft or magic spell there's no demon in hell nobody can listen when god said nobody can curse you nobody when god is for me who can be against me who remember the sign i used to have up right here right over my head huh because God is for me, who can be against me? Huh? Because God is for you, who can be against you? Listen, the thing is, you may not be aware of what anybody is doing, but God is. He could block it. And he will. And he does. He has given his word. Jesus gave his word. I don't know about you, but Bishop, that's also one of my favorite Oh, my Lord. When I discovered it, I said, Jesus, what? And he said it twice. <laughs> you know, Jesus is real nice when he says, surely, surely. That's the way he give it to you back to back like that. Come on, baby. You know you good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, we are blessed and no man, no demon can curse us. Matter of fact, I dare tell you this. They will look and see us and run. I used to tell my children that, you know. I used to pray every day, send them out to school, you know. And I said, listen, when kids try to fight you, they're going to see your angels and they're going to part. And you're going to walk straight through, straight through. You know, it literally has happened. They lived it. <laughs> God is real. I take God's word very seriously. I believe his word. The word of God cannot lie. And, and you know, the Bible says his word cannot return void. And, the, and his word says heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot, not one tittle of God's word though. So what am I going to believe? I best believe the word of God. Come on. I don't know about you, but word of God is what I'm holding on to in Jesus' name. Now, 
We're also justified and made righteous through the cross. You know, I remember when my daughter was younger. I don't remember what she did, to be honest. But I remember I was going to spank her. That part, yes. And what I also remember, her siblings. Mom, no! And they jumped in front of me, both of them. And I said, you want me to spank you for her? And I thought they were joking. So I, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay. At first I was like, you know what? I am not going to even bother. But I was like, wait a minute. They're really willing to take her spanking? So I said, oh, you really willing to take her spanking? So I said, which one of you? They said, both of us. I never saw that. And then me, I did spank both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't no big thing. But can I tell you, they never cried. They never shed a tear. They just went on about their business. They took their sister and they went on and they went playing. Years later, God would use that situation to allow me to see how truly loved I am by God. See, my big brother jumped in and said, uh-uh, I'm going to take my sister's place. Listen, it was a simple act they did. But that allowed me to really be able to fathom, and, and not, to the, not to the fullness of it now, but to really get a really good grasp on Jesus' love for me. That he took my place. He took my debt. He took my beating. He took my scorching. And he did the same for you. The Bible said we're joint ears. He is your big brother as he is mine. He's my children's big brother. He's my husband's big brother. Oh my God. He's our Savior and Lord. Hallelujah. You see, he took our place. He took your scourging. And mine. He took our place. No complaining. He laid his life down. Just as my kids' siblings did for her. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think I could go back another day and beat that little girl for what she did? No, I couldn't. That was done and gone. So why do you think then... God is punishing you with sickness and disease and all manner of evil. When he already punished sickness and our big brother took our place. And he's the only one who could. And he paid the price for our sins and our iniquity. So let me read Isaiah 53, 10 through 11 for you. Yet it pleased the Lord God hey, to bruise him, Jesus. He had put him to grief. It, what? It pleased God. Listen, I didn't even know the scripture was in the Bible. Come on. Is it? Listen, I mean, it's been years now since I discovered this, but the point is, uh, there were time. There were I, there was a time when I didn't know it was in the Bible. And I'm telling you, I had to say, God, Daddy, it pleased you to, 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 to bruise, to crush Jesus for me. Jesus, you, you willingly said, you know what? I'll take her bruising. I'll take her crushing. I don't even want to continue, man. I'm telling you, hallelujah, every time this scripture gets me. This is another one. It just gets me. Seriously, sometimes I'm like, I can't finish reading it. I just got to sit there with Jesus for a moment. But anyway, we got to go on in our day because you know, we have stuff to do. All right, all right. So when... Thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. 
God made Jesus' soul an offering for sin. This is why he has to come as he had to come as flesh. He shall see his seed. That is God seeing his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He shall see all the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. You know, I, I, I used to say, man, when God saw his son on the cross of Calvary, how torn he must have been. But the Bible said he was satisfied. And it doesn't mean we, we tend to think of it from our perspective of how we deal with losing loved ones because they're gone from us for a time and a season that until the new life, you understand. But we'll never see them in this life again, right? So we think of it, or let me not say we, let me talk about myself. I used to think of it in terms of that way. But wait a minute. No, God the Father and God the Son sat and said, this is what we're going to do. And Jesus said, yes, daddy, yes. So the Bible says God was satisfied by his knowledge and shall my righteous servant justify many. Because he knew this was the only way we could be justified. And he shall bear their iniquities. It satisfies God. It satisfied him. Because it's already done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It satisfied Jesus. My, my children were so happy. They took the meeting for their sister. Let me tell you, they didn't cry, they didn't, they didn't, they just went, took their sister and went, went off playing. Huh? Jesus took our place. And he's saying, why do you keep looking at things you are not to be looking at? My children weren't like, they, they didn't come peeking around the corner. Is mommy coming? Is she coming to beat her? Nah, they didn't. They were like, we took her beating. It's done. It's over. Mom can't touch none of us anymore. That's done. They were happy as a lark. And that's how we ought to be. Anything else, we're really calling God a liar. Y'all hear me say this all the time. And, and I posted um, Evangelist Arlene's message. Y'all should listen to the portion with the gentleman. Let me tell you something. Because he walks you through how you call God a liar. And so, many times, we may wonder, what's stopping my breakthrough? What's stopping my, my, my deliverance? When the word of God says differently. I told you, when I had that disconnect, I had to go and, 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 and sit down with Jesus. Because I'm like, mm -mm, cannot stay this way, Lord. And that was one of the things. I doubted God. Therefore, I was calling him a liar. Now, if I'm calling God a liar and I doubt him, how do I expect him to work for me? How do I expect the things that he says is a blessing for me to bless me? It wasn't happening. I had to repent, turn, turn towards my father, look towards him and stop looking at the situation and circumstances and madness and mayhem that was going on around me. Or else I'd never be here today. I tell you that much. But to God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. So it pleased God to punish our sins and our iniquities in the body of Christ. And only He was capable of paying the cost. You see, my sons figured. <laughs> They could tolerate the punishment for their sister. And they took it. And they freed her. Jesus did so much more for us. He took our crushing. 
and he legitimized our access to daddy God and he made us honorable so that we can dine at the communion table and if you haven't gotten your your matzah your crackers your bread go get it now come on and if you haven't gotten your grape juice or water go get it now in the name of Jesus because it's communion morning and so Jesus makes us worthy to partake of his body and his blood the bread of life the cup of blessing hallelujah thank you Jesus now I'm almost to the end but we are also held together by the cross we have salvation through the cross we have redemption and righteous uh, justification through the cross righteousness through the cross and we're held together through the cross Christ Jesus Colossians 1 15 through 17 says Christ is the visible image of the invisible God he existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation for through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth he made the things we can see and the things we can't see such as thrones kingdoms rulers and authorities in the unseen world everything was created through him and for him he existed before anything else and he Jesus holds all things together I want to show you another picture what does that look like doesn't that look like the cross kind of a little bit crooked but it looks like a cross doesn't it amen praise the Lord thank you Jesus well do you know what that is some of you may recognize it that is called a laminin a laminin is a family of protein they're an integral part of the structural scaffolding of basement membranes in almost every animal tissue laminins are what holds us together laminin holds you together it holds me together it's part of our protein DNA literally they are called the adhesion cell molecules they're what holds one cell of our bodies to other cells of our bodies without them our bodies would fall apart you know when there's a breakdown you know there are people who keep saying they're falling apart falling apart and they eventually fall apart guess what the proteins hear you say that you know our bodies hear us when we speak how many times have I said that this wasn't part of the message but it is again watch what you're speaking it's best listen if you don't know what to say open the Bible and just praise that just 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 just, just read it's reverse and just pray that and praise that to God it's better <laughs> hallelujah glory to God so we also saw the children of Israel in the formation of the cross and when no matter how hard Balak tried to curse them he couldn't our protein cell that holds us together is in the form. I don't know about listen oh Lord hallelujah anyway let me just continue we are also healed through the cross now let me read you I have to read these I'm trying to read them real fast and 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 don't don't say she's reading them too fast you can go read it when you finish for yourself come on spend time with the Lord I keep telling you that read the Word of God for yourself and if you can't read the Bible play the Bible app and open the Bible and you will learn to read matter of fact you become so brilliant that you might even get your doctorate today you can't read tomorrow you'll be a doctor of something all right come on in Jesus name amen all right so healing 
here, here, here is um, Numbers 21, 4 through 9. Then the people of Israel set out from Mount Hor, taking the road of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people grew impatient with the long journey, and they began to speak against God and Moses. Be careful of speaking against God. Mm -hmm. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness? They complained. <laughs> there is nothing to eat here and nothing to drink. And we hate this horrible manna. They hated the bread from heaven. Mercy God. Oh Lord help us Jesus. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people and many were bitten and died. Then the people came to Moses and cried, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, Make a replica of a poisonous snake, attach it to a pole. All who were bitten will live if they simply excuse me, look at it. So Moses made a snake out of the bronze out of bronze and attached it to a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by the snake, listen, could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Just looking to the cross, look to the cross and see Jesus and be healed. Eons ago in the wilderness, the children of Israel, they looked up and looked at the bronze serpent on the cross. Today, we can look to the cross and see Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach, the one who took our place at the cross of Calvary and claim our healing. In, in Isaiah 53, 3 through 5, it says, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with suffering, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us shalom, peace, was upon him, Yeshua Amashiach. And at the cost of his stripes, the cross of Yeshua's lacerations, we are healed. Glory to God. You see, Jesus loving, today I want you to see Jesus lovingly looking at you from the cross of Calvary and saying, I am the bread of life. Take and eat. That is in John chapter 6 and 48. And I close with this and then I turn it over to, to, to Bishop Anderson. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh, this is Jesus speaking, I was, I'm reading John 6, 55 through 57. For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh, hallelujah, glory to God, and drink my blood, remains in me and I in him. We co-union with God. We co-union with Jesus. We live in him and he in us. I keep saying it's like the egg is inside of us, but we are inside of the egg. It's like we're in the house, but the house is inside of us. Come on. It, 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 it's, 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 it's an Oh my goodness, my goodness. We can't even explain it, but God, we just have to experience it, believe it and live it for it is what it is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me and will live because of me in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hebrews 2, 14 through. Okay. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Who had, who, who what, sons and daughters of God? Who had, for real, for real, hey, Jesus, only in this way could he set free all who lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. My God, thank you, Jesus. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people since he himself thank you jesus hallelujah has gone through suffering and testing he is able to help us when we are being tested glory to god that's a great scripture to hang our hats on in jesus name hallelujah it is indeed another one of my favorite scriptures in Jesus' name hallelujah amen Amen, amen. Amen. Yes. I am a recipient of finished work. It is. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. So take and eat. Know that every laceration that Jesus bore was for your healing in Jesus' name. So take and drink a cup of blessing. Amen. 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 Ooh. Hmm. I, I don't know about anybody else, but this was really sweet this morning. Bless the Lord. It's like, mm, like Jesus put some honey in this one. Even in the matzah. Mm. Oh, praise the Lord. We just thank you this morning for the blood of Jesus and the cup of blessing, the body of Christ. Know that. Claim your healing. Look to the cross. Look to the cross. No matter what is happening in your life, look to the cross. You saw, I showed you the picture. Our bodies are held together by a, a, a protein cell in the shape of a cross. Come on. Um, all things are held together by Jesus. We're held together by Jesus. You will not fall apart. He, he was caring for them in the wilderness. You saw it. The children of Israel were in the formation of a cross. Their backs were turned to their enemies, yet their enemies could not defeat them. Sons and daughters of God, nothing that the enemy hurls at any of us is going to defeat us. Who are we going to believe? The word of God? Who are we going to believe? Jesus, the one who died on the cross for us, the one who took our place, the one who jumped in. Let me tell you something. My, my, my daughter loves her brothers because they were always there taking her. her, her. I mean, she did, don't just love them for that. But the point is, when you know somebody has got your back, Jesus has our back. He has our front, our side, our above and beneath. Come on. Trust the Lord. Trust God. Trust God. Where you can track him, trace him, or trail him. Because he's real. He is real and real. The things we see are subject to change. But the love of our God will never change. The power of our God will never change. Glory to God. So come on. Trust God. Believe God. Go on and have a dynamic day. Because he said we ought to have days of heaven and earth. In Jesus' name. Come on. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm all fired up. I'm all fired up. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, have a blessed and a wonderful day, Bishop Eloir Ray, to your Facebook fam, YouTube fam. Uh, let's continue to trust God and serve God. And truly, I do pray that each and every person who hears this message today, that you will have a day of heaven and earth. No matter what day it is, actually, you will have a day of heaven and earth. No matter what it is you're going through, that you will trust that the God to whom you belong. Oh, trust. Come on. Earth acquiesces to him. Your problems have to bow to God. Trust him in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day. Because you're loved and you're blessed beyond measure. We all are. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bishop.
Oh yeah, oh yes, amen. Jesus did. Yes, yes. So what you what you're not hearing is Bishop said Jesus brought heaven to her. Yes, he has. So you enjoy it. Amen. Amen. No, not just for one day. You're right, Bishop. Not just for one day. You know, I, I, but I was just taking it as one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that one, you know, so just, it's, it's like every day, the Bible tells us though, every day God puts new mercies, every day new blessings, so every day we have to say, Lord, let this day be as a day of heaven and earth, this day, this is the day we living in today, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We have to remain. Mm -mm. Uh, uh. Amen, amen. We we have to we have to live inside. Inside. Let him dwell in us and we dwell in him. Oh my god. And, 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 for, and for those who say that's not proper context, that's not, you know, proper speech. Listen, when it comes to Jesus, come on now. All that goes out the window. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I say good morning to everyone who joined. Good morning, Sister Danette. And for all those who, Reverend Lee and all the others, to God be the glory. Yes, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. So, uh, yeah, to God be the glory. All right, take care. Love you guys. Have a blessed and a wonderful day. Know that I do love you guys. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves us all so much. It's time to run on in his love. Amen. Praise God. Be blessed. Thanks, Bishop. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye.